Hello and welcome back to the Angerati uh, studio here at European Utility Week. We are uh, joined now by uh, Jessica Stromback, uh, who is the Executive De Director of the Smart Energy Demand Coalition. Uh, firstly, welcome Jessica. Th thank, thank you, you for uh, uh, making the time to be here in the studio. Uh, it must be a relief to just sit down for a little bit. It is. <laughs> uh, That's right. Jessica, the, 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 uh, the first question that comes to it, uh, that is the obvious question, but will lead us on to uh, hopefully other things, is uh, w what is the Smart Energy Demand Coalition? What are you, what are you trying to achieve where, uh, with that group? So the Smart Energy Demand Coalition is a, a representative group, um, non-profit industry group, looking to enable demand-side participation in the energy markets. And by that we mean everything from commercial industrial demand response bidding directly into the wholesale uh, balancing markets down to your humble feedback display, uh, intelligent bill, uh, which is enabling uh, normal residential consumers to lower their total consumption. So it's really everything um, between those. And the basis of it is that we have a very particular challenges within the energy industry in Europe such as such as it being very um, splintered uh, the deregulated market models a challenge um, you know many different countries many small markets and and I have to say a history of very um, difficult regulation when it comes to demand I mean it's it's actually been a surprise in, in starting this group to realize that in many markets in Europe it's actually illegal for demand to participate. Really? Yes. Uh, so we're beginning with a, a, a market where you know you have everything from from the UK which has really worked to enable demand side participation to to other markets uh, which absolutely are it's it's blocked. And, uh, 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 and, and what issues does that blockage raise for the uh, for the uh, whole industry because it isn't it one of the part of the fundamentals of making the whole smart grid work that that you have this participatory it's a huge issue here. it's a huge issue so uh, we've had a very good success in um, engaging uh, the, com the European Commission the European Parliament members of the European Council in in beginning to to try and um, remove some of these barriers and I think the reason we've had this this level of success is and 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 a good um, reception from them is is because it it very quickly becomes obvious that the entire smart grid plan is is not going to go anywhere if this type of barriers stay in the markets. So, so do you think that, that there's going to be a European mandate to uh, 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 to remove that barrier w w w that, that could cure some of the issues in, in one swoop, but th Europe and Brussels don't um, necessarily move that quickly. No, actually yeah. they already did, right. surprisingly. So yeah. they, uh, the SCDC was begun at the end of, we're almost two years old now, so um, a relatively young coalition and uh, the, in the Energy Efficiency Directive we had a an amendment which we um, yeah, gave in and it's it's been accepted and and the basis of that amendment is that demand should be treated equally within the markets that is not a magic pill I mean that has to then get implemented uh, we're also therefore working very closely with Acer uh, with NSOE to ensure that as the layers of regulation as this goes down through the layers of it's regulation, it's, yeah. it's maintained as a principle and realized. Yeah. But that is an absolutely night and day huge uh, shift because we demand actually, surprisingly enough, had no legal rights at all within the energy industry, within the energy markets right. prior to this. And so to have on the books that it does have rights is a a huge step it forward. The first, it, now, it, it now just needs to trickle down in the, in the various More than trickle, be uh, shoved. Shoved. <laughs> shoved and supported. So, so you're spending a lot of time shoving I'm, things. I'm doing uh, a lot of shoving <laughs> these days. Yes. I, 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 and in terms, I mean, uh, 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 that is one aspect. I'd, I, I'd like to ask you uh, another question. You, you, uh, you know, you, you've been in, in the industry for, for some time and uh, 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 we're, we're coming to the end uh, of this event. 
Um, what would you say are some of the highlights uh, of what you've seen? And then the, the secondary question is, you know, what are, what are some of the lowlights? I mean, what are some of the things that you're still disappointed with, you know, uh, in terms of either a conversation that's still going on, and you're like going, ugh, I thought we've dealt with that. Highlights are, you know, I've been coming to this conference every year now for, you know, the past decade, I mean, almost since it began. And when we were first here, it was all about technology. It was all about smart meter rollout and how do you roll out smart meters and what does that mean? Um, we've now moved way beyond that. You are now getting, um, you know, presentations on how you manage load on the Faroe Islands and move 10 megawatts of load and you're using your smart meters and you're communicating with the customers and this is being traded on the energy markets in, in Denmark. I mean, it's, it's much, much more robust um, beyond the technology, uh, looking at what we're really able to do in the markets and, and making really fundamental changes. That's very exciting. I mean, every time I see something, um, and here I'm referring to the Dong Energy presentation that was given this morning, every time I see something like that, it's very encouraging because it's like, okay, we're, we're using this technology for what it was made for, right? So that's great. Um, when I get frustrated is when, uh, is the focus that tends to slip in, and I can understand why this happens because it's a tough job and, and people get discouraged and tired, but two things frustrate me. The first is when people focus on the barriers rather than focus on creating the solutions. So when I see a panel discussion where the discussion is going and all of a sudden nothing's possible, everything's difficult, and, and you, you never and get beyond that point. Yeah, you, you constantly then it's like, hear that we need standards, we need this, yeah, we, we need know that. Yeah, we, we can't do this, we can't do that, consumers yeah. won't react. Da, 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 da. And it's like, okay, I've, I've been hearing that now for a while. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure, yes, there are definite complications, but I think we as an industry win so much more by finding solutions. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Having that be Absolutely. the focus. Yeah. Um, the second thing that frustrates me is I think that as an industry, again in the name of finding solutions, I think we do so much better to look at um, things that have a positive business case. Because this, and, and you're, you're doing a double take, because this has, because this, much of this has been mandated by regulators well, as a sort of a social good, the focus obviously goes on to what do we have to do and compliance and all those kinds of things. Fine, but in whatever consumer group you're working with, be it, be it industrial, be it, you know, the elderly in apartments, whatever you're working with, look for, look to create the positive business case. And this is not just w what's the minimum I need to do to tick the smart grid box is right. what does that enable me to do develop it and therefore I am now actually leading the market rather than just doing the bare minimum exactly and you're doing something that will work so because so many times what I see somebody goes they do they do the bare minimum lo and behold it's not interesting and uh, it doesn't work they just wasted their money and, and fine, and, and you have a, an example of something not working. Well, great. Well, we already knew you could fail. <coughs> whoop de doo um, so, so you, you, fo you, you get way further by looking, okay, what here will work, and let's do that. Well, let, 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 uh, let me ask you this then. Uh, 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 in the time we have remaining, uh, yeah. you have probably seen instances of the positive business case being articulated. Yes. And to, okay. Tell us about those. Let, let's end this on a positive note. Positive notes. Positive business cases. Uh, exciting things happening. So, um, personally, I find the, the aggregation business of, of bringing um, many consumer loads together and selling those directly into the energy markets uh, for their real market value, which, keep in mind, can be 100 times 
the, the normal energy price. So all of a sudden a consumer, rather than earning you know, 20 cents for their kilowatt, is earning you know, 200 or whatever. You know what I mean? It's yes. going up. Yes. So that translates into billions of euros going into consumer pockets. That's very exciting. And that's a, a real development. You see that beginning to develop in the UK, in France, in Germany, in Denmark, in, in Finland, it's so on and so forth. It's actually, from a consumer point of view, quite, a bit, uh, quite an incentive to have, you know, uh, to participate then, because you well, might go, well, exactly. hang, hang on a minute, I could exactly. make some money here. <laughs> you can, and, and keep in mind, we're in, an, we're in a financial crisis. So you tell a hotel chain, uh, you know, you can earn 30,000, a hundred thousand off of off of your elevators and your freezers and your air conditioning. Um, that's that's employees they're keeping. You know what I mean? I Absolutely. mean that that's translating into job creation, yeah. and and what it means is that rather than going to um, you know Saudi Arabia to buy oil to keep those power plants going, you're putting that money into consumer pockets. I find that very exciting. I find the other end of the scale can also be very exciting. I just got out of my last meeting was with, with Tendril, who, who's developing and, and also um, you know, many others, but developing, for example, smart apps for teenagers to be able to just turn lights on and off and, and, and uh, you know, control energy, play with energy in a way that, that otherwise they can't do. They've had a lot of positive feedback from that, those experiments, and we're looking to develop that further. That's exciting because it's real, it's fluid, you're doing it for under 3,000 euros, and you have no idea where it goes. Exactly, you've got this platform that can then yes. actually self-proliferate, and, uh, yes. and you may even get some competition and uh, that sort of gamification exactly. thing involved in it. And what's great to see is that whereas five years ago, your utility would have been just you know, oh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. um, they're now much, much more receptive and much actually excited about things like that being developed. So to me, that's great. Yeah. And, 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 and that's a brilliant note to end on. We, I think we've done it. We've ended on, on, on something positive. Uh, Glad uh, you and, liked uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jessica, thank you for making the time to be here in the, uh, in the studio. And uh, thank you as well for watching. Uh, remember, there are many more interviews on Engerati, white papers, uh, uh, original reports and, uh, and guest commentary uh, as well as uh, our uh, global news feed. So uh, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this production. Thank you.